joint on the last shit. Live in the hills, but it still get a spread. Started with a layer, but it still reinvest it. Fear how I fear, then you feel less a blessing. I just want the lesson, I just want protection. I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression. Mama never plans if you brace for perfection. Hey, Finger to the down, hold it down, we gon' get it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got your watch list coming in to September 24, 2020, and the stock market sell-off is continuing. Today was a crazy day. The NASDAQ dropped 3%, the S&P almost 2.5%, but what made it so unique is that a lot of the move wasn't with a gap up or gap down. So intraday, this was actually one of the biggest days since June. So it was kind of interesting. We've seen other big days. However, you felt this one a little bit more today because most of the move wasn't happening pre-market or post-market. Now, even as far as the UVXY goes, it started, it finally closed green at a higher level. Again, it's not as fearful as we were two weeks ago, if you kind of remember, when everything kind of started to kick off. So even though we're at a lower point, the velocity and a few other things have changed. However, now we've been talking about it. We've been watching it. We did make a play today on TLT, so we'll talk about it. Don't get too jumpy. However, the dollar is now moving kind of outside of this range so there's a lot of things going on we have a lot to talk about I have the plays we made a lot of plays we did a lot of credit spreads we got clapped on some took a lot of good profits on others so we'll go over that and I can't wait to show you so you could follow along and we have our work cut out for the rest of this week and everything else we need to look at so let us not delay you guys know what you need to do drop your thumbs up on the video make sure you subscribed and if you don't know we are live Monday through Friday 30 minutes before open it's the first link in the description and it is pinned in the comments we better see you there in the morning it's free 99 it costs you nothing to join youtube.com slash the stock market you can post the plays see the plays watch the watch list come to life and yes if you want to learn credit spreads live and watch them vicariously through me so you don't have to get clapped and you can paper trade and then you can see actually the real effects and everything then Hopefully, we see you on stream. And the most important thing you need to do, post or watch this below. Let us know what you're looking at. Got any plays, comments, remixes, anything. Post them below and source that info. Shout out to Chad, baby. But right off the bat, today was so interesting or unique because of the intraday sell-off. Like I said, it wasn't one of those gap up or gap downs. That is the first thing. And you can see how the market felt it differently. Again, those factors like the UVXY and all that. But now, I'm sure the question a lot of people are asking is, why? Or is this going to be a further sell-off? So now, the main thing that I'm getting out of this, there is a lot of factors. We even saw Monday. Again, Monday was a pretty ugly open. That was post-Powell. Since then, we've gotten a little bit more out of Powell. But Powell and the other Fed members, they've been and coming off as hawkish, uh, pretty much in the sense they are talking a lot about stimulus. Every time we've had Powell up, he has been speaking about that. But now at the same time, there has been a lot of other Fed speeches going on pre-market and throughout the morning. And even then for the rest of the week, you're going to get Fed Powell. You're going to get Fed Williams. I think even on Friday, you're going to get another Fed where Fed Williams again. I think there's even a, a few more speaking, but even some of the more important Fed members, including Powell, they will be speaking this week uh, continuously, but they keep talking about stimulus. They keep saying we're going to need future stimulus. They're saying the recovery depends on stimulus, all of Powell's guidance, stimulus, stimulus, stimulus. But now the market doesn't like this because stimulus does not look like it's on the horizon now because you have the election, you have everything associated with the politics. Even then now too, there is some other factors playing. This is why it's very, very hard to see. This is why today was kind of interesting. The bounces were very, very weak. Some people, again, are questioning what's going on. You see it with the VIX, but there's all of this stuff with the election, stimulus and all that. But now at the same time, you're getting talks of a second closing. So there were some hints today that New York or some other U U.S. states might be at it or that kind of fear is uh, lingering a little bit. But at the same time now, the other issue is the U.K. and the second lockdown there and how that would affect us overseas. So all of these events are kind of swirling around now, and that's kind of having an effect on the market. And then finally, end of the month is the end of the fiscal budget with Congress and all that. They did have some positive news on that today that they're getting closer to a deal or something to avoid 
uh, shutdown or anything of that nature. However, we will see when that comes out or how things could heat up then. But all in all, a lot of different factors. And now it seems like if the market hits new lows, the market is kind of falling into a range that it's pricing with all of this being said with stimulus, what's needed, what the Fed people are saying, what they're doing to help out or what they're planning to do to help out, what's going on with everything else now, government, virus, et cetera, et cetera. So that is pretty much the summary or the recap for today. And then as far as, like we said, the rest of this week, there will be initial jobless claims tomorrow. There will be new home sales. That data has been good. I haven't really been giving that much too much weight this week, any of that data, because again, Powell and a lot of the other Fed members have been taking control. But watch out for the rest of the Fed people to speak, and then we'll see there. And then focusing on the ranges and seeing what if the market is pricing in a certain range or lower, and then balancing everything from there but balancing will be important we will talk about that but that is pretty much it so let us get into the plays so right off the bat uh we did a lot of plays uh credit spreads still it's like i picked the worst possible time uh, and again that's what i get for selling weeklies we had some good luck some bad luck we closed out that tesla one from yesterday for a thousand but then i got into some other credit spreads i did this wells fargo one and now you have to be careful again none of this is a recommendation i'm doing this so you guys could even see here's a good you know live vicariously through me but I like this play a little better now because now you'll get three times as much credit for the same risk, but now it's in the money. So this was a higher percent probability when I sold it. And this is what we were talking about the weeklies that could change. But again, we'll wait till expiration. But with this play, I shorted 50 of the 23 puts, bought 50 of the 22. I got 10 cents credit, 500 bucks, but now you could sell the same play back and get $1,700. So by expiration, I will need Wells Fargo to go up. We got clapped on that play. The next credit spread, I took the profits on the other Tesla call, and then I sold a put. We did another weekly, sold the 340, 335. I did 10 of them. So $5,000 max risk on here. I need Tesla to close above 340 by the end of the week. Again, same logic here. Even though I'm doing bigger quantities, always paper trade these and you cannot go wrong selling one. So again, I did some big ones. I am coming off of the play. We also did a credit spread on Nike. We got like 280 bucks on that one. We got a thousand from the other Tesla. But then the final credit spread I did, I sold these spies. And this is when the spy was at 328. This, again, these were all higher probabilities throughout the day, but things changed. Change. They are weeklies. They're risky. So you guys are going to have fun watching what we do with these. But I shorted 10 of the 321s, bought the 317s. We need this spy to close above 321, and I'm even down 675. So down almost $2,000 on credit spreads. We took $1,300 profit. All of them expire this week. So watch what happens there. Some of these uh, I might even average down. We're going to see tomorrow or tomorrow morning how that all plays out. But nonetheless, uh, get based on the VIX, kind of how everything is holding up. Unless we see market really go crazy, even by the end of this week, I'm still kind of liking this cucketing until we get into October and see what happens. So it could be bad timing on my part, but we will see. Let's play the statistics and see what happens. But there was that play. Then the next play, I actually did a TLT. So do not get ahead of yourself. The reason why you could see here, TLT did not really move, but GLD has been moving. It's fell out of a range. UUP has moved uh, again a lot. This one has even been more surprising. Even the volume on UUP today is actually uh, kind of insane uh, looking at it, even with the average. So that caught my attention. But then I have some of these shorter term plays. I was like, okay, if something does fall, I don't want to get clapped on the premium or even then. I'm even setting up to want to play a lot more premium or selling premium. So I was like, well, might as well go for some TLT. It's kind of an insurance play to get me out there. It's not like I'm like, okay, this is it. But the thing that makes me like it is all of the trifecta has moved and bonds have stayed the same. So that means either gold and the dollar are going to fluctuate really hard in another direction or something is about to go crazy here with the bonds. So I grabbed uh, only 50. Uh, I was still like 15 or almost $2,000 of the December 190s, kind of similar to the other strike we got. So it's actually just above 10% out the money on December. I paid 33 cents for them. I will want to make these free, but I have not yet. And they're actually up a little bit. So I got that. But the logic is the trifecta is moving, it's lagging. And then now if I set up some of these, we talked about it earlier today, I have all of those EEM plays. And again, you guys even see they came back to life. You know, I even made $800 on this play today alone. That's one of them. But then we have the other ones 
where those are still up 50% as well too. So a lot of these plays are holding up. I have insurance. So kind of what I'm going to do is use this to sell some premium because again, if the market did liquidate, I could even lose bigger amounts on some of those plays that have high collateral. However, I have a lot of bigger exposure on stuff if anything really, really did move. So be careful with that though. I'm watching out for that. I need to keep that in mind and still balance the budget at all times. But that was the second play that we made today. And then finally, the other play, I did two other ones. Again, I did this one as an insurance as well. And we've talked about this. I brought this up on every single watch list. Again, we did this. You guys have seen this all through the months of, month of September. Whenever we've kind of noticed the rotation and it's clear to see the laggers and leaders, I hit McDonald's again. We did exactly what we did last time. We waited. Pretty much the market started dropping. Again, I have I was losing on some of those other plays. I was like, okay, let me get some of this exposure. And this is what I was telling some of you guys where you could react to the drops. You don't need to be early more so if once you could kind of confirm it's getting bigger or if you set up other plays and it's working against you or again, setting up plays like premium where you benefit off of the cuck and maybe you know small plays could go a long way. You could react on the short term, but again, it's always gonna be risky. So I grabbed these McDonald's put, I grabbed 10 of the next week, 200 puts. I grabbed them at 28 cents. I think they're up almost 100% by close, but notice the timing at 232. Pretty much at this point, the S&P was already hitting a low and I think it was already down like a percent and a half. You can see it's low, but McDonald's was just barely below where it was at that day. So I was pretty much playing the bre the break because I said, okay, looks like everything's starting to liquidate. Those leaders are going to get liquidated too. We played the break again right there at 32 on McDonald's. So we caught a pretty nice move down and that gives me some of that short-term insurance. If I do get clapped on some of those credit spreads, I have shorter term plays. Again, everything would have to really get clapped or I'm, I'm assuming. So that was the second play. Then finally this morning, I like to play it held up. I even went after it twice. I even went in on it on the small Robin Hood account. Yes, that one with a hundred bucks. I just haven't been playing with it a lot. You got to pick and choose with a hundred dollars, but I like it for the continuation. They were up like 19%. So at one point they were, they were up around 10%. I liked it. The premiums were about 80%, 100% the day before, but I got the Nike October 155 calls at 14 cents. They pretty much would go up and stay around break even, but I like them. They don't have as much time. So it's only about like a two, three week contract. That's what sucks about it. But I'm hoping for continuation pop. However, I do think Nike will continue. And I, and I do like, I want to look for some time on there, but it's going to be a question of playing the earnings and everything and the premium flowing throughout it. But those were the final plays. Everything else as far as tomorrow, I will even look at the HDs as well. Again, you saw me hit the McDonald's, but if we start to see more downside, I will look at HD. Again, it's the same logic really and they've been up a lot, but just kind of how the premiums move. So it's going to be kind of responding to tomorrow and knowing where you could get the best kind of premium plays, but watch them. I'm going to watch AMD, uh, especially with selling credit spreads as well as, again, buying cheap premium. This is going to be a good one too, so I kind of like it. They've moved a lot. They've had some time decay, so I'm going to be eyeing AMD as well too. Remind me about those. We still have our Snapchats. Those are doing uh, very, very well still, so still watching, going to be holding them and seeing how those, plays out. those play out. Then watch J&J. &J. They got some vaccine news, but they're a slow mover, if anything, and again, kind of see where they're at. They're at that one-year level. If things do get clapped, they may get hit. So watch them too. That could be one of those downside ones like HD or McDonald's. Watch Oracle. Negative talks on the deal, but those October contracts are, are decimated. So if there is bad news and it does develop, some of these uh, downside puts or with maybe with a little bit more time might be a little bit better, but I'm going to be watching that. Then USO, again, we saw some crazy moves, but those old plays that I was up and went down on, you would expect them to decay, but they're holding up a little bit better. So there's been a lot of volatility even today correlating with some of the news and everything else you saw European currencies or excuse me Russia go crazy and some other oil currencies but don't want to jump to conclusion however you could kind of tie this in with everything else so watch them watch Nike again watch EEM and IWM I like both of these because you could kind of see these are indexes they represent you know Again, the broader picture with the Dow, NASDAQ, and all that. But you could kind of notice those trends are kind of lower than what we saw in that first little drop at the beginning of the month. So that caught my attention. The premiums are up there, so focus on that. But finally, watch the trifecta again. But again, use the dollar as a signal. This is a key level above 25. If it holds up here and you see more dollar movement, it goes crazy, that could tell us something. So maybe this will even be our dollar cushion for them surprising it. So we'll see what happens. We even have old plays. Those are kind of cheaper, but I said it today. 
I like what we got here. I want to be smart. I want to utilize credit spreads, but we need a little bit more confirmation. However, anything could happen, and we're entering an exciting point of the year. But that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you're hydrate healthy, ready to go. Make sure you post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining. I need you to take some risks, baby. Limited liability, the greatest thing in the world. Take advantage of it. You are even expected to fail. Don't be afraid of failure. Don't be afraid to try, but keep the budget balanced. Balanced. Keep it small. Risk management. Be smart. Be nimble. The code loves you. I love you. I'm going to see you in the morning. Let's go. <laughs>